How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Separate Locations But One Heart, episode number 116 of How About That Cigar Live. Thank you so much for joining us. As you can see, Garrett is coming to us from a beautiful remote location. Garrett, where are you at tonight? I am just outside of Hayward, Wisconsin at uh, our family's amazing, beautiful cabin. Nice. And it rained just a little bit ago, so I'm in the three-season porch right now. Uh, I wanted to be overlooking the lake, but. Yeah, just in case it rains, stay covered and up. Bugs. And bugs. And bugs. Yeah, yeah I hear you. So, uh, so guys, as always, for our viewers and listeners, we're grateful to have you guys on with us for episode 116 of How About That Cigar Live. And thank you so much, as always, for joining us live in the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And let's once again remind you about the beautiful new Under Crown 10. To celebrate the brand's anniversary in 2021, Drew Estate is getting all decked out, a tagline that denotes Under Crown 10's elegant packaging and reinforces the pride of Under Crown's 10 years of excellence. The new sophisticated packaging is surpassed only by Under Crown 10's complex, rich, and bold blend of ultra-premium aged tobaccos that includes the highest priming Mexican San Andreas dark wrapper, the very finest broadleaf binder from the Connecticut River Valley, and a tripa blend of select and rare Nicaraguan and tobaccos born on the factory floor at la grand fabrica drew estate the undercrown brand is a passionate testament to the creative talent dedication and self-determination of drew estates torcedores blended with many of the same rare vintages found in liga privada undercrown quickly became a grand slam for drew estate as consumers felt a deep personal connection to the grassroots firebrand that celebrates the typically unheralded working class heroes employed at the Drew Estate Cigar Factory. For more info, please visit drewestate.com. So, uh Garrett, you're you're where, you know, a lot of us would love to be just chilling at the cabin. Um but at the same time, you know, life uh life goes on. So my wife and I just had our wedding anniversary over the weekend. We took a very last minute like wasn't n not even planned out. We jumped on a plane and went down to Fort Myers and just chilled for the weekend and uh, just got back very early this morning, actually. Um, but so as twins fans, like we talk about a little bit at the beginning of every show during baseball season, we're in the fault, what I like to call the false hope stage where the twins are playing really poorly and then all of a sudden they start winning games again where they really necess shouldn't necessarily be winning those games. Uh, great se uh, series against Cleveland recently. And, but I just, do you, do you have a feeling it's going to do the thing that it does, which is kind of crumble? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we just don't have the depth in our bullpen. That's, um, yeah. I mean, we could, we could add, you know, any other position and, and, and stay the course where we are now. Um, but we're not going the distance without a bullpen. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. And that's been the problem for the last, I don't know, 30 years for the, for the twins, 25 years for the twins. 91. The mm -hmm. um, when we have good closers, we trade them off to other teams. And when we have good hitters, we trade them off to other teams and Byron, but don't recognize talent. We don't recognize talent. And Byron Buxton can't stay healthy for more than three games. Nope. I think he just got a hangnail and he's going to miss 20 games. Yeah. Somewhere in that yep. neighborhood. Uh, the yep. Stanley Cup finals uh, starting out tonight. I, I haven't checked the the uh, the score on game one, but I know the Stanley Cup finals are starting out tonight. I was actually hoping for the opposite teams. I was I was hoping for, for Islanders and Golden Knights. But, you know, I think the best two teams ended up in the finals. I agree. Uh, as far as the way they're playing their goalies, both those goalies are sick. Ridiculous. Yeah. So it's, I think it's going to be a fun series to watch. If anybody uh, knows what's going on with the game, put the score in the comments for us. Um, so guys, as always, we have a wonderful special guest on the show this evening. And as always, you know, that special guests of how about that cigar live are brought to you by 
Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, the Internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona Cigar Company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors, and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. You'll also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American, president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please put your hands together to episode 116 of How About That Cigar Live from Espinosa Cigars, Hector Alfonso Sr. Brother, welcome to the show. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure to give you give you some good relief today. By the way, it is Lightning 2, Canadians nothing. Ooh, okay. All right. Vasilevsky is a beast in that show. I think he had one of the best goalie saves I've seen in the last couple of years. He had his, it was, it was, I think game two of, of the last series. And he, he had one of those saves where he seriously, he laid out so far. He looked like he was skydiving. It was incredible. I, I am not a huge hockey fan. Uh, I, I obviously like everybody else who lived in my, in Florida when the Panthers made their run in the late nineties. Uh, but I, I, at the shop, I have seen a hey, Shad, How are you? I'm looking at all. Hello. Hey, Kevin. I've got I'm interactive here talking to you guys, saying hello to the guys in the, in the audience. We so, love it. Uh, uh, this is I, I have watched a lot of the games leading up to the finals and the, the goal, the, the, the goalkeeping has been incredible throughout this whole playoffs. It uh, it's it reminds me a lot of that 97 year where Van, where the Beezer was just Van, Van Beesbrook was incredible. And yeah. then, you know, uh, coming up against Colorado's Patrick Waugh, who is just who is just a legend, just a, a, just a, just a legend on top of not knowing, of course, cause I was a novice. I'm still a novice when it comes to hockey, but Patrick was like what six, five or something. He's this huge yeah. guy in the pipes, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> which, you know, and Beezer was a little guy, you know, but, uh, incredible, incredible hockey, incredible goalkeeping. Uh, but you know, for those hockey guys, you, I'm sure, I hope they enjoy these next seven games. If it goes seven. I hope it goes. I always wanted to go go to seven. I mean, unless it's yeah. unless it's my team, you you want to sweep. But but just as, as a as a hockey fan, you, the more hockey, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, les habitants. <laughs> yeah, we kind of exactly. have a we kind of have a Hector sandwich right now. I like it. <laughs> Hector, how do you feel about that? Hey man, you know what? I'm uh, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Hector, what are you uh, what are you smoking tonight? I am smoking. I was smoking a six hundred one Crypt tonight, but uh, I am now gone to the six hundred one. I have gone to the Espinosa Laranja, uh, the workhorse of the of the Espinosa line. Uh, in a in a unique size, we uh, it's a little uh, it's a six by sixty box press that we did just for shits and giggles, shits and grins about three or four years ago, and I had some left in my humidor, so broke it out for a special event how about you guys nice uh i've got Uh, the beautiful war zone uh box press churchill love that cigar love that cigar one of my i'm just finishing up this uh probable cause by protocol which you might know a little something about yes under the tutelage of one can't sell obviously i I managed to 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 blend that cigar for them Mm -hmm. uh it's a, it's a nice little cigar. It is actually it's a it's a pretty good cigar. It really is. It's got a little yeah. it's got it's got a little bite to it. It's a it's a it's a good cigar. You guys are smoking good today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And I've got just just for fun, a little Florida Kanye, you know, just because because I can. Unlike smoke. Garrett's in the oh Garrett said something very interesting I've never heard before. In the three season the three season room, is that what you called it? Three season porch. What's what's so season? Oh, winter obviously. The, okay, never mind. <laughs> in, in, yeah, in in the north, we uh, we have a season where this doesn't porch very well. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be unless you're unless you're John McTavish, and then he'd be out there. He'd be right. out there with the green screen behind him and with a cigar fired up. Have you ever? Have you ever? Have you ever podcast? Not have you ever zoomed with him 
not oh, show yeah. related, but just zoomed with him on a night that you know that he's in his and he's in his yard when it, he's in his porch or his patio with his park on, or like twenty mm-hmm. degrees. He's got oh, all yeah. you see is this, you know. John's a hardy bastard. I'm not gonna lie to you. He's a <laughs> that's right. He's a hardy son of a gun. Well, and you know you got to be hardcore living in Canada with the the taxes the way that they are for cigars. Number one, sure, and and the weather. You know, winter six months out of the year. Um, yeah, but you got to love just, cigars to I was be just John McTavish. To, sometime last week it was thirty degrees and then seventy seven the next day. That's how people die. I, that's how I figure <laughs> people. That's how people get pneumonia and die. You know, I don't understand. You know, that doesn't. You know, that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, that's just yeah. the weather gods messing with you. Well, we had that back very unseasonably warm. So Easter was uh, on April 4th this year, and it was 72 degrees in Minnesota, which is unheard of for April 4th. I mean, it's it's still there. You're still having big snowstorms and frigid temps. But then I think by Tuesday of Easter week, it was back down to 28 degrees for a I high. Could- Three weeks ago, the Cubs. Uh, two weeks ago, the Mets were playing the Cubs, and it was cold. And then Saturday, yeah. they played at Shea Stadium. It was ninety degrees. It's it's just you know, when when summer comes, it comes quick. Are we in summer yet? We're not even in summer yet. We're late spring, correct? We're still in late spring. No, it's it's summer now. I thought summer uh, June is twenty first. Okay, June twenty first is summer. So you know, damn, it, they they're not kidding when it's it's like all right, summer, ninety degrees, hit it. Well, that's right. June 21st is the longest day of the year, correct? Yeah. Summer solstice. Yep. And that was, we were down. So when Amy and I were in Fort Myers over the weekend, one, I think it was Saturday that it was, uh, it was 82 for a high in Fort Myers and it was 84 for a high back here at home in Forest Lake, Minnesota. That's ridiculous. Did you like being in Fort Myers? Did you like being the youngest guy in the whole county? Oh, dude, we, we, <laughs> dude, that's so funny. We, Amy and I talked about while we were there, we were like, every place, clo- no, you can't, if you want to have a late dinner, you can't do it because every place closes at like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Well, sure, late dinner is 5.45. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's God's waiting room. Fort Myers is, you know, God's waiting room. What is it? Oh, my God, look at that line to eat. What time is it? 3.30. You know, we really got to get in there. We got to get in and out by 3.30. They want yeah, you gonna... fed and back in front of your TV for sitcoms at eight o'clock. That's what they want. So yeah, it's it's like yeah, dinner, uh, dinner at four thirty p.m. and uh, then a cup of sanka, and then it's off to bed. <laughs> you know, and you only drink sanka if you don't have any postum lying around. <laughs> for Ovaltine, Ovaltine. Ovaltine. That's right. With warm milk, not hot, but warm milk. <laughs> So, well, uh, Hector, if, no, if I ahead, may, Kara. I want to give you a public thank you for sending a care package to a charity that I did this a uh, uh, couple weekends ago. Uh, means the world to us in the you know Twin Cities, Minneapolis area to have people such as yourselves in Espinosa that are willing to uh, donate to a charity. So I just want to really thank you for. Uh, being a part and we had a great time it was a great event no and, it's, um, it's it's our pleasure to help whenever we can you know whenever we can uh, especially now when 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 cigar manufacturers are faced with such back orders and such you know uh you know yeah. to be able to help is, is is not a problem i mean eric uh, eric is that kind of guy i mean it's it's that's how he is and uh you know what 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 really you know what what expense is it really a, a box of cigars to to help a worthy cause you know Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. So I want to talk about it's we're coming up. Well, we're sort of in the middle of, of trade show season. We talked a little bit, bit about that before we went live. Um, we just had the TPE trade show uh, last month and we uh, got to hang out and talk to Eric and, and Jack at the at the TPE trade show. And now uh, you guys are not only exhibiting at the 2021 PCA trade show. You guys are also co-sponsors of the big uh, opening night uh, reception. So how, how did all that come to be? That's pretty cool. Well, you know, I, I had a plan for the reception. It would have been a Fort Myers type of reception, three yeah. 30 to four o'clock. <laughs> uh, but obviously they went in another direction. Listen, uh, the PCA uh, it's, it's a, it's an unusual year for the show. 
Uh, there are not only are some of the, the bigger guys who said they weren't going to return have not returned, but even some of the companies, the mid-sized companies, companies are equal uh, in size and in production have decided not to go for one reason or another. And that's, and that's fine. Uh, but it left kind of a vacuum there. It left a, a hole there and it gave us an opportunity, us along with uh, Ace Prime and, and Crown Heads to you know to 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 help out and and do this obviously not on the scale of the same of the same parties that everybody has known of or has seen in prior years but you know with the whole theme of it being a family reunion kind of thing uh three smaller companies you know we're gonna do we're gonna put forth the effort that we always do i mean you guys are are familiar with eric and uh and we don't do anything half ass and you know the it, it's going to be a good time. There'll be, you know, there's going to be some giveaways and there'll be cigars for people to smoke and there'll be a little bit of swag. And that's just coming from us. I'm sure that uh, Ace Prime and, and Crown Heads will do the same. I mean, uh, who has a tighter hat game than Crown Heads, you know, and you know, their cigar, they have great cigars and Ace Prime has, has done really well and they've got some really nice cigars as well. So if you're going to be at the show and if you're going to be at the party, it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be great. I mean, it'll be a little smaller scale. You know, but it'll still be fun. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's been two years. Uh, it's been two years since we've gotten together at with this organization in that venue. So uh, I think it's something we're looking forward to. Yeah, it's it's always. And one of the things we mentioned at the TPE trade show, and we're looking forward to that continuing at the PCA trade show is honestly, we just want to be back together with people again. You know, uh, it's great to sell yeah, cigars yeah. and it's great to buy cigars and all that stuff. But um, just being just being <laughs> back together. I know you have to you have to measure that a little bit. But we, we OK, I'll speak for Garrett and I. We really enjoy <laughs> being back together with people. <laughs> Listen, Eric likes a party. Eric likes a, as, as they used to say back in the 70s. He likes a big room. He likes a big room. And, that, and that's fine. And listen. This is, you know, that's how you, that's how you, that's how you get places in this industry. Obviously you make connections, you, 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 you meet retailers and, and, you know, and, and you make these friendships that last for dozens of years in some instances. And it's, it is a good, it is a good time. And listen, there's a lot of guys that out that I, that I haven't seen in a couple of years, a lot of guys that won't be at the show that I, that I consider friends of mine. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing them at a later time when I, when if I, when I go back to Nicaragua, when I start to do my little, my little uh, Mr. Warmth tour where I hit four or five shops, but it's, it's true. It is a good time for people to get together and, and, and commiserate. And it's, and it's been a couple of years and hopefully the, all the talk won't be about COVID and it'll be more about, you know, the cigar industry moving forward. Uh, hey, look, if we, if I could have had the party in a phone booth, I would have had, <laughs> I would have had it in a phone booth, you know, uh, I'm sorry, sir, your name. I'm sorry. You're not on the list. You know, it's, I mean, I'm, I like a small room, baby. I like a small room. But uh, we know it's 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 the best thing for the industry. And listen, uh, like I told you guys prior, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, in that sense, it's a chance to get out of the office. I've been stuck in Miami for for two years now, and uh, it gives me a chance to you know to get some fresh air. Even though it's that beautiful Vegas fresh air, which is the same as when somebody opens an oven and you stand in front of it. So uh, you know, it's 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 a chance to do. It's a chance to to break the monotony that uh that that covid kind of brought upon us i mean last year all of us became all of us became shock jocks or or podcasters last year i mean hell even me and jack were, were doing a podcast you know just to to stay busy and stay relevant but i think maybe it's time uh it's it's, it's not a bad time to put the headphones down and you know shake a couple of hands and yeah and 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 throw back a couple of drinks you know yeah so hector what is your okay when i was eight years old and you were eight. So I went to Target the other day, and then um, I like bald eagles. Just kidding. I, I'm I'm I missed something here. I'm, I must have missed the first part of that sentence. Could you repeat the Could you repeat I, the question, Matt? I think I think Matt. I think Garrett's having a stroke. I think you might want to call over and see if somebody can put a spoon. Garrett, in your mouth. do you do you smell toast? <laughs> does everything taste metal no, we had to you <laughs> we had a uh we had a fun little time in the green room before, before oh the show. yes a, yes well yes a call course, back. yes yes, yes. No, why but, say why say 20 words when a thousand will do yes of course <laughs> but in all seriousness hector when you go to the show what is your role what do you bring to the table 
my rules are very my uh I heard Target and I like bald eagles. <laughs> I love Skip Martin. <laughs> you know, he says nothing, and then what he says is gold, Jerry. It's gold. <laughs> gold, Jerry. <laughs> it's gold, Jerry. It's gold. Uh my role, my 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 ground rules are very set. I'm not to get into any fights with anybody, I'm not to yell at anybody. Uh <laughs> and, and the reason I get these rules because these things have happened. Uh when a certain media guy is the, comes by, I'm to leave him alone and not mess with him. But he doesn't come by the booth anymore, so that's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> my role really is to to provide uh, security for the cigars because cigars do tend to disappear at the show, not because of thievery or any kind of theft. I work for guys who like to hand out cigars. They do. I mean, that's uh, he'll tell you this is it's how you it's how you start a conversation. It's how you conceal a deal. It's how you you know it's 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 what makes the makes the show go around for us. However, I am also cognizant of the fact that I have brought a certain number of cigars to last a certain number of days, <laughs> and I don't have time for any bullshit, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, and and we've all seen it. We've all been at the show. I mean, you guys doing your thing, me doing mine, and there'll be that one store owner who's got a seven hundred square foot shop in Mamuka. Mamuka, Florida, or something, and he brings ten guys to the show. You know, he's got twelve regular customers, and ten of them are at the show with him, and he wants samples. Or I'm not playing that game. You know, so my game is to say no in, in a lot of instances, and to say, you know, and to question, you know, and to secure the cigars. You know, one time several years ago, I I had to go to the bathroom mid 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 rush, and when I came back, there was dozens and dozens of cigars have been handed out, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? Excuse me, sir. I need that back. You know, you know. Can I? <laughs> did, did you whoa, bite whoa, this? Whoa, you whoa, didn't bite this, whoa. right? I'm gonna need that back, sir. I'm. Yeah, I'm excuse me. You know, I'm Jay. also the. I'm also the guy who ran after. Not well. Run might be overstating it, but I stepped lively towards a guy who took a cigar out of our display. We had a cigar in our display, and he just took it and walked out. Hey, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> It kind of looks like, what are you doing? Oh, this fucking guy took our cigar. Come here. You know, that's uh, mine is to make sure that. And then also probably the more important thing is to, uh, you know, when the media guys come over and, and I guess this year it'll be different because we'll have, we'll, we'll uh, this year it uh, we'll have, I guess the, the YouTubers will be the YouTube guys who do the cigar shows will be there this year is to provide any kind of, uh, any kind of information they want, any kind of references they want, you know, uh, they want to talk about the cigar, they want to talk about the blend, they want to talk about the factory. I'm there to provide that kind of, uh, you know, the, I am, you know, historically speaking, I'm, you know, I'm, me and his son were there from day one, so we know everything about the company and everything we've done and every cigar we've done, and and I'm there to provide that and some comic relief, believe it or not. Yeah. Institutional, well, inst institutional memory. <laughs> provide institutional memory <laughs> well and it's it's a good time for you know for us to be able to go from booth to booth and it's not like we're you know we're not we've talked about this before we're not reinventing anything when it comes to pca trade show coverage we're going to go from booth to booth and we're going to interview people live and just like we did at tpe and because we know that the people who who watch and and listen to uh, how about that cigar? They they want to hear about, you know, the uh, the new products. They want to check in with their favorite brands and stuff like that. And and we just keep it simple and just have friendly conversations with people in the booth. We'll do that with you when we're there at the show. And and also just like I said, just off camera, just hang out and say hello to people that we haven't seen in years and and uh, maybe people we haven't ever had a chance to actually meet in person. So it's just going to be. Listen, I'm I, I really only go to the show for the free samples. I'm just yeah. here for the samples. I'm just <laughs> I'm just you know, I'm just here for the samples. I sit there and wonder what Jack has brought back because Jack is the best. Jack is the best at finding and getting it. Hey, have you tried this? No, oh, how the hell did you get that? You know, because I never leave the booth because yeah, Jack, of my Jack leaves the booth. Jack does leave the booth. Less now because you know, bro, where are you at? <laughs> we, we, we need you, bro, we need you here. But oh, uh, you know, I I forgot who it was, but somebody called. It wasn't Jack. I don't think it was anyone from Espinosa, but they said um, they made the the comment that somebody was one of the best trick or treaters at the trade show. 
So he, that sounds like what Jack does. Listen, if Skip is watching, Jack, Skip will tell you. I mean, there nobody weasels like Jack Toronto. Like, and, <laughs> and, and and nobody and not just weasel. I mean, you know, he's got a whole system. He's got levels. If he can't weasel, we'll barter. If we can't barter, we'll negotiate later on something. I mean, Jack Jack brings he brings home the bacon, buddy. And I like <laughs> because I like to smoke stuff from everybody else. Yeah, I like to see what's out there, what people are smoking, what's new, what's current. Because at the end of the day, I'm a I'm a consumer at heart. I mean, I work in the cigar industry, and and now I'm you know that's all I do now full time, which is still it's starting to seep in and and be more of a reality. But I'm a consumer at heart. I like I want to know what's new. So uh, and you know and I, I, what's the hot and every show, every show there's a hot new company. Yeah, there's a hot new company. Whether they last or not is a different story for another day. But you know, you at the end of the show, you always hear, "Oh, that was that show was that 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 manufacturer was the buzz of the show." Yeah. So we'll see. You know, I'm always, hey, I'm always down to try something, good or bad. I mean, right. If it's bad, well, skip. You know. Skip can confirm. Skip confirms yeah, that skip, Jack is is the best. Says, he's the best, especially in the general days. <laughs> oh my God, I'm surprised General <laughs> turned to profit. I mean, they were just, you know. <laughs> Jack likes his trades, baby. Jack, likes, <laughs> Jack likes his trades, baby. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Hey, <clears throat> listen, it's the part of the it's the it's the one part of the game that I don't have. He'll it's uh, in Spanish we call it tabla, you know that 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 ability to take a joke or take shit from people, have your balls busted, but also that thing about you know being able to negotiate and barter and I, I, that's no good for me. I just it's it's not it's not part of my DNA. Completely part of his DNA. <laughs> no problem. You know, I should have learned more, but you know, I I don't want to learn too much. So, um, I also want to talk not just about the the big trade shows, but also about you know the uh, the smaller in store events because a lot of as things are starting to open up, we're talking to a lot of brands that they're they're getting people back out into shops around the country for in store events where you have special prices you have swag you have you know food and and drink and and fun and stuff like that so uh is espinosa kind of getting back out there for for in-store events again we are we are definitely going i mean our eric just traveled a couple of weeks ago eric was in his favorite part of the country which is in pennsylvania he was up in pennsylvania visiting some some accounts uh jack was in georgia and then jack was in uh charlotte uh so you know it's they're slowly coming up, you know, really. And if you think back, if you think back years ago, there really wasn't a lot of travel that month before the show because yeah. people were coming to the show. But mm -hmm. uh, being the fact that now things are a little bit more open, uh, people are traveling and, you know, and, and they're doing events and I'm looking forward to, you know, to, to, to the few events that I get to do and uh, events are a big deal. Look, uh, in our, in our team, the, our makeup of our team are, you know, the, the, the frontline guys, uh, Eric is a showman. Uh, Jack is also, you know, he's a big personality and, and, and they both, uh, between both of them, I doubt that there's some, nobody in the industry that they don't know. Uh, junior is, you know, junior is, is, is the chip off the old block. You know, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. The kid also has a lot of personality and, you know, he's gone out to do events also, we have Richie Riot. Uh, I'm sorry, Richie Otero. <laughs> I got to stop calling him Richie Riot. Richie Otero, you know, who who's handled some key accounts for us, and you know, it's a guy who's got incredible hustle in the humidor of, of all the reps I've ever seen locally here in Florida and, and in other shops when I've been there. Uh, very few guys have the kind of hustle Richie does. Richie doesn't. Richie doesn't give a shit what you're smoking. You could be smoking a ninety-five dollar Cuban, and he's like, "What do you smoke, bro?" Forget that. Here, try this Espinosa Habano. You know he doesn't care. Richie has no. You know, he's uh. You know, he's he's got hustle, and I and I admire that. I'm probably the weakest at that. Uh, that's that's not really my game, but you know, when I the the events that I do go to and the ones that I've that I've gone to, it's usually very nerdy type things where it's you know stores that maybe have that customer base that want to break down to you know the cigar and profiles and flavors and blend. That stuff, I, and that, and I'm better at that. I really am. You know, I've just, you know, everybody's got their forte. Everybody's got their strength. But I think we have a very, a very strong core. And traveling is something that is not, it's beneficial to us. And it's actually, it's in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Well, and our goal for Richie 
because if you guys, uh, for those of you who watched <laughs> audio our, our, <laughs> Lozona, our Lozona Palooza episode about 10 months ago, uh, it, our goal is for Richie to make enough sales so he can buy a better internet connection. Because we could not keep that guy, that poor guy could not stay connected to the show. Well, he, I think it was audio. He couldn't hear. He was on, yeah, but yeah. he couldn't hear. And we felt yeah. bad because Richie, Richie wanted to be a part of the coverage. I mean, listen, I hate the show. Big part of the industry. Big part of Espinosa. Lozona Palooza is, I'd rather, you know, it's, it's, it's Chinese water torture. But, you know, it's a big part of what we do. And, you know, and, and, and they all want to be a part of it. I wouldn't say I hate it. But it's just, it's very tough for me because it's. It goes against everything that I've, <laughs> it's everything that I've watched. <laughs> so many people, you know, <laughs> we're watching so many people, you know. So, uh, you know, we'll definitely work on that this year when we do our pre Lazona coverage. Uh, knock on wood, uh, we'll definitely make sure if Richie doesn't have a better Wi Fi connection, he can come to my house and do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, we'll get him a special nice headset as a gift so he can keep his audio connected. Oh, oh, look at that. What is that, Garrett? That's interesting looking. That is our ode to Garofalo. What a great cigar <laughs> that is, huh? That's beautiful. The wick. That's funny. I've got I've got something. Oh, what? look at that. What? Very nice. I am sandwiched between two fingers. Outstanding. <laughs> you know, that's a that cigar, that cigar, uh, that cigar got a lot of buzz. Uh guys who look at that. Look at that. You're number one. You're number one, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, that's right. you know, that cigar, that cigar was something that, that the, the Zona Palooza pe people got for Zona Palooza and, you know, it kind of sent a very nice message to keep our name out of your mouth. And it has so far. So <laughs> luckily we won't have to do a second one or I won't have to knock the taste out of somebody's mouth. Well, so it's anyway, a, uh, it's, it's a really nice ball buster cigar though. It's got, it's, it's tons, not in it on top of, of it being on top of it, having its meaning, you know, the cigar's got some balls. It's got it's. A, it's. A, I think. I think it's a very flavorful cigar. Yeah. I could. I couldn't even finish the first one I had. So, uh, I've had. I had well, to wait for the got a little time on them before I could smoke it. I again. had to pick something with some nuts. Um, following that that protocol. Um. So. Yeah. Once you smoke that protocol, your night is done unless you're smoking other strong shit. Yeah. You know? Good luck. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Tell me when you're at Target again. I'm at Target and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's go back to Target and uh, what was the other? The Bald Eagles. Bald Eagles, yeah. I like Bald Eagles. <laughs> so let's talk about the um, – so you already mentioned that you and Jack got in the podcasting game. And uh, as a lot of people did during the pandemic because it gives you something to do. It gives, keeps you busy, keeps the brand out there and, keeps and all you that in touch with It keeps you in touch with your people. Yeah, exactly. It keeps you in touch with your people. You have, you know, they they're committed to you by buying your cigar and posting it and going to the website and going to events and us having this little podcast where we could engage with people. Even though it's in the middle of the day, 3:30 Eastern Standard Time, we always had people watching it. At the end of the week, we had over a thousand engagements, which is unbelievable. It was just me and J it, the outline of the show. It's very simple. It's me and Jack talking shit. And then whoever, whatever guest Jack could find, because he knows everybody and I don't know no one. And then at some time during the show, uh, Eric calling in the middle of the show or Eric calling our guest in the middle of the show. Yeah. It wasn't planned. It just always worked <laughs> out that way. It was a comedy of errors and it was hilarious. I mean, it was just yeah, like, it was uh, so funny. We're talking to Mike from Hustler and all of a sudden he goes, hold on. Eric Espinosa is calling me. Does he yeah. know we're doing a podcast? <laughs> oh, he doesn't care. He doesn't care, bro. Hey, bro, what's up? You on that podcast? Yeah, I'm on it right now. That uh, doesn't matter. Tell them what's up. Tell them I say what's up. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of guy. It was. It we never took ourselves too seriously. Listen, when we first started, uh, some of my friends in the in the media were telling me, you know, you got to be, you, know, uh, you got to be more serious. You got. I said, listen, it is what it is. It's supposed to make people laugh. It's supposed to, you know, Jack going, are we on? Are we on for the first yeah. minute? You know, it, we never took ourselves seriously and we were never going to piss off the sponsors because we're the sponsor. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this shows it's not like Heckle and Jekyll live from Espinosa Cigars is brought to you by Drew Estate. You know, right. it was brought yeah. to you, you know, <laughs> because then I'd have to hear Joe Grow calling me going, hey, what are you doing, bro? Get more. Uh, you, need, you need to be more professional there, you know. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you what, what. And I've got two things I wanted to tell you. First of all, I have an incredible, I have gained an incredible amount of respect. Not that I didn't respect you guys to begin with, but I have gained an incredible amount of respect for the 
prep work that you guys have to do for a show. I mean, you know, you have to at least have, you know, you can't ask the same 20 questions to every, every guest, you know, you, you can't, you're not running a script. So the, you know, you guys, all the prep work you did and then hoping that the internet gods are with you, that people can connect and you can communicate and everybody can hear each other. It's been, it's, it's, it really, after we did like heckle and Jekyll, like four or five weeks in a row, boom, 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 boom. Oh, this is easy. Or who are we going to have on this week? Well, I'm out of friends. I don't have anybody. Yeah. <laughs> the one friend that I had, shine, you know, I'm out of friends. You know, he, he shined me. And then, you know, he was dead to us until he came back on the week later. And then, you know, we re, we, we, we brought, we rekindled our friendship. I have an incredible amount of respect for that. But I'll tell you, the best part of what came out of that was that we did a draft show. We did yeah. an NFL draft show. That has been that that's been great. I mean, I mean, I people and I'm not blowing smoke up my own ass here. You guys have been on. Uh, we do this draft show for three hours, three and a half hours. And with the exception of some teams are just hard to find fans. We just can't. So we have our we have fake Alan Rubin on the sidelines. But after a while, you know, even fake Alan, you can only bring on a guy so many times. Right. You know, and then people are going to say, hey, bro, don't you you know, so we we're going to reformat it a little bit for next season. But we're really we're on to something with this draft show. And it's been funny how how excited cigar guys get for this draft shit. And I've got to, if I think back for the last two years, not once while we were on the on that on that show, did we ever talk about cigars? It was right. straight football yeah. and never what are you releasing or what are you smoking? Then fuck that shit. Where are the dolphins drafting now? <laughs> or in or in Matt's uh situation. You have the greatest quarterback of the modern era, and you're going to take a kid called Jordan Love. What is that about? You know, uh, you know, it was that kind of, you know, it was, we sat there, and I don't know if you guys saw the first year when Coop went blue. The Giants drafted Orion, and Coop went blue. Yes. Coop was, you know, he's like Buddy Hackett <laughs> on the Tonight Show, just, you know, spewing shit. It was hilarious. But we dropping the F bomb, dropping the F bomb yeah. like it's going out of style, and then telling me, I told you I was right about that guy. Of course, you did. <laughs> so, I'll tell you, if nothing else ever comes of the of Heckle and Jekyll, if we do a no, don't do another podcast, we're going to keep doing that draft show because we have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, and we actually sure. did prep for it, and we had our list, and and we were on the spot. Listen, uh, two of the two of the most well known guys in 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 the in the cigar world on the sales side. Are, are Carney and and uh, Terrence Riley, yeah. And two years ago, they were both scheduled to come on. And the moment Terrence got on, New England trades out of the pick. So we're like, Terrence, you got to go, buddy. <laughs> we, had, we had to had to hang up on Terrence Riley, the nicest guy in the industry, you know. Yeah. So it's it's it was it was great. We've really we really enjoyed the draft part. No, and and honestly, the 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 amount of prep work that you guys have to put into that show and the the uh, the level of flexibility you have to have because like you said there's going to be trades there's going to be changes you have to be you have to be on the ball you have to have all the all the the links sent out to people and have people in the waiting room ready to go ready to come in and then drop out again and that that the prep work for that one draft show that you guys do equals a year's worth of podcasts like what we do and i'll tell you what it went really smooth it went really yeah. smooth, except for the exception of one guy that just we couldn't we just couldn't corner him. His Wi-Fi, you know, and 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 Jack's guy, which Jack Jack's gonna owe me forever. Uh, <laughs> we're very we're very close with the guys from AJ Fernandez. Obviously, AJ and Eric have a relationship, a friendship, and 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 we're close with Omar and Frankie, and we're very friendly with them, and they're friends of ours. And Jack tells me there's a guy who works with them named Albert Tamargo. Who's kind of like you know? He's kind of like Rain Man. This guy's a draft guy. This guy's a draft guru, a, a, a draft nick. We got to have him on. And then he twists my arm, and I finally, I, all right, Jack, we'll have him on. So, and the kid does no draft. The kid does no football. Unfortunately, the kid misunderstood the whole concept of the draft show. So he went to a bar. So we spent the whole four or five minutes we were on. He'd go, I think the Dolphins are good, and then he lowered his. You see the top of his head only. <laughs> And I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> so, but, and then, you know, we'll have the kid back on next year. We'll give him a chance again, but it was fun. I mean, it, yeah. it, it really is fun. You say, this is not energy. radio, bro. This is not radio. We got to see your face. Got to see your face, bro. <laughs> no, we, we love it. Uh, Matt Absolutely. and I, you know, love, love the draft show. And this last and, year, you're right. And, it, it was, and you guys, and you guys always draft towards the end of the night, which is great. 
because at the beginning everybody's <laughs> down everybody's happy at the beginning because you know hell you know i'm gonna you know, the guy from Cincinnati, i'm gonna take joe burrow my grandmother could have said joe burrow is going to the biggest right you know but it's what <laughs> happens when you're you're picking 27 you know and you know that's that's the situation you know so that's that's yeah. it's really a lot of fun we really really enjoy it and this year by some miracle green bay actually drafted players that they need well what, what, <laughs> what's that going to be like I don't. I don't know. I that whole thing with Rodgers is very weird. What's going it on there weird. with Rodgers is very, very weird. Listen, I I can't comment on 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 that because I don't know enough about the teams. But you got you know you pissed off a guy last year so much by taking Jordan Love that he went out and had an MVP season this year. Yeah. You know, throw the brother a bone, man. Yeah. <laughs> get the exactly. get, get the guy a receiver for God's sakes. You know, get yeah. him somebody to throw him the ball to. You know. Yeah, it'll be. Interesting to see how the uh, rest of the preseason uh, workouts and all that plays out. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, I, I hope he's still wearing number twelve when the season starts. It would be, it would be, a, it would be a crime if he wasn't. It would yeah. really, it would really well, be a it, crime if he wasn't. Isn't he Listen. missing out on like fifteen thousand dollars for the mandatory training camp? So uh, I mean, that I, should hurt. I, that I should think hurt. I think it's forty five thousand that he loses by oh. not uh, yeah so forty five thousand that's that's I think he makes that in about an hour. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. Danico owes him that for lingerie from a couple of years ago. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, we do the best we can with Heckle and Jekyll. It's no meet the professor, but we do, we're trying our best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I want to I want to turn the, the talk a little bit to food. So um, I like food. One of the questions I have for you, Hector, is when it's when it's your turn to cook, what is like the number one thing that you want to make every time it's your turn to cook? Reservations. <laughs> Hector, nice. Hector Alfonso doesn't cook. <laughs> Hector Alfonso eats, but he does not cook. Nice. I was not I was not blessed with the gift of cooking. Okay. I, I just I because if I told you what my favorite meal was, you would understand. I am like Joey Triviani. I like a sandwich. Sandwiches. I like deli sandwiches. I know it might sound, you know, with all the foodies in our industry, uh, with all these foodies that we have, I am a sandwich guy. I am very happy with a roast beef or turkey. Or, I like sandwiches. I'm not that complicated. I had I never learned to cook. I do two things a year. I might make a lasagna which I have no heritage to, I have no historical reference to it or it's not part of my heritage or anything like that, but I do make the Turkey at Thanksgiving. That's it. Outside okay. of that, I don't do shit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't cook. No, shit. it's all good. Hey. <laughs> at least, you like know, this. you know, how many, how many guys are out there thinking they're the best at making steaks? Let and me you go el- over. Let and me make elaborate. You let me elaborate. I don't, barbecue i don't grill i don't smoke i don't do any of that i hear these guys talk about it sounds delicious if i'm invited i'll I'll have some but i don't grill i don't barbecue i i don't do the pig in the pit i don't do none of that shit i don't it's it's just it's not part of i am i for many years i worked in law enforcement for many years i worked really bad hours so home cooked meals and stuff like that really weren't a part of my Part of my uh, dossier, you know, wasn't part of my regimen. I lived on fast food, and you know, I'm, uh, you know, I I like fast food. I'm sorry, it's it's quick, it's convenient, it keeps me moving on to the next thing. But I'm a sandwich guy. I so, love a good deli. So, so I got to say this in the comments. One of our viewers, Chad, is saying, he say he says, "Love me a good cubano." So I have to echo that. I am a absolute fiend for Cuban sandwiches, but. There's a lot of really bad Cuban sandwiches out there. So is that is that a sandwich you're you're a fan of? Of course. The problem is that when I was growing up as a kid, Miami was predominantly uh, the the predominant Latin or Hispanic population in Miami were Cubans. So when you went to a Cuban restaurant, Cubans worked in the restaurant. They yeah. made Cuban sandwiches with Cuban Cuban people making Cuban sandwiches. Uh, that's not the case anymore. You can go into a Cuban restaurant and they might have a a Dominican in the sh- uh, Dominican making sandwiches, or a Nicaraguan guy, or El Salvadoran. They, it, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. And maybe it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm 55 now, where back then I was 10 or 12 years old. But to find a good Cuban, a traditional good Cuban, is very hard. 
now you have all this nouveau, you know, I had a Cuban sandwich today. Somebody, oh man, you got to have this. It had mayonnaise in it. Oh, can't throw the sandwich back at the guy. I wanted to, but it had no. mayonnaise in it. It shouldn't have mayonnaise in it. You know, it's, yeah. but I do like a good Cuban sandwich. I can, if you make, making one at home is, if you can, if you have a panini press, you know, you can make your own Cuban sandwich. Do you think I have a panini press? No. <laughs> no, I have an iron. I have an iron and a salt stone. We're gonna... Well, I don't have a panini press, but I have two cast iron pans, and I use well, that. There you go. I use that. Just heat yeah. both of them up and, and put one on top of the other. It works. I hear people talk about this is my old grandmother's recipe. Uh, that's great. My 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 mom didn't cook. I, I don't. My mom wasn't a great cook, so it's just there was no love of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of the guys who are in front, they they love it. They oh my. look in the in the chat, Skip. If you guys have ever been to Nicaragua, Skip, you know when they threw Gringo Cocina, he cooks he cooks a, a world winner shit. Fantastic. Uh, Jack uh, Jack likes to go out and eat. He's a foodie. But when we're watching games at his house on Sunday, always grill. There's always burgers on the grill or something. That's just not my thing. I just yeah. I'll eat yeah. now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not passing up a free meal. But <laughs> so what's just not? What's your favorite sandwich? I like a good roast beef and turkey. I know it's an odd combination, but I like a good roast beef and turkey. What kind of bread? I like, I can go white hoagie, whole wheat, Italian, French, you know, Cuban bread. I like for Cuban sandwiches. I don't do yeah. anything outside of that. Yeah. So I had, when we were in Fort Myers over the weekend. Oh, we went to a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were at Fort Myers. Yeah. Fort Myers, Naples and Tampa all think they have Cuban cuisine. And yeah. They I, I, <laughs> they I don't. Right, right, so go ahead. We go to a place and I order the Cubano, and everything about it was right, except they put sweet pickles instead of dill pickles on a dill Cubano. Pickles, sir. Dill pickles. When you, you're lucky, they when you ordered the Cubano, some some guy named Sergio didn't come out and say, "Hey, what you ordered? You asked for me. I'm here. What do you What do you need? You know, come on, bro, get out of here." <laughs> I could not believe they served me a Cubano with sweet pickles on it. I mean, everything else about the sandwich was right, but sweet pickles just threw it off. Listen, I uh, Eric is a huge foodie, and on top of being a huge foodie, he likes to tell you he's a huge foodie. And, you know, he, he doesn't need I, – I, I, like I've told him many times, I believe you. But, you know, he, he likes to – he cooks, and he, bring, he makes a bread pudding that makes you want to slap your mom. I mean, just a fantastic bread pudding. And he makes a penny a la vodka, which is very good. And, and he's made some other dishes. We have a guy who works with, in conjunction with us, uh, Dustin Prudhomme, the cigar, the Cajun cigar czar. He's a big guy from Louisiana, big Cajun guy. He threw down the other day. He made, for my retirement goodbye, my little retirement party, he made grits, shrimp and grits, which mm -hmm. is nowhere in, in our wheelhouse for Cubans, shrimp and grits. It was, the, it was the most delicious thing I've ever had in my life. I mean, you know, this. There are guys who have that talent. Hector Alfonso yeah. does not have that talent. <laughs> I mean, to thyself be true, man. <laughs> you, know, you, should, you know. Well, and well, I gotta. By the way, I gotta get. Sorry, Garrett. Before I, I gotta say, cheers, Hector, to your retirement, brother. Oh, thank you so much. Bro. Thank you for oh, yes. Thank you for many years of loyal service, and and uh, we wish you uh, just a, a lot of time just chilling. Thank you. I, I, I'm I looking forward to another another eight or nine years of working, uh, hopefully working with Eric at Espinosa and then uh, and then actually retiring, yeah. uh, <laughs> moving up to the Carolinas and yelling at the kids on the, in the neighborhood for being on my lawn. That's what and, I'm looking and, forward to. Right? And visiting visiting Coop's parlor. Uh, uh, yeah. If I can get a VIP entrance, if not, well, yeah, I, you... I haven't sat on plastic furniture in a while, but I'm looking forward <laughs> to, you know, reminiscent of my mother back in the uh, back in the 70s. So, uh, yeah, so before I'm, I'm, we get, no, I was just going to say before we get too far away from the sandwich, con sandwich conversation, I got to give a shout out to the Reuben. That is my favorite sandwich of all time. I do like a, I do like a good Reuben. So if you're ever in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, we got to hit up Cecil's deli. Yes. Uh, it was, it, it's the best Reuben around. And it is fantastic. People believe it or not, Chicago. I prefer I prefer a Rachel to a Reuben. Oh, okay, sure. Turkey. Yeah. But I'll I, yeah. I'm I'm cool with it. Listen, I wanna I I wanna go to some of these places where they have some of these iconic sandwiches, like the hot beef sandwich and and the mm -hmm. and a good gyro 
and a good grinder and uh, the Philly cheesesteak. I haven't had that chance, but I'm looking forward to it. I mean, hell, you know, life is sandwich, you, man. <laughs> you guys should take, yeah. you guys should take the Heckle and Jekyll show on the road. Yes, do a and sandwich do a tour. sandwich tour. I'll have to talk to Eric on that. I'll have to catch him in a really good mood. Yes. Like after he hits the mm. lotto or something like that. I guess. <laughs> skip, skip. I agree 100%. The Juicy Lucy. Isn't that a Drew Estate that, cigar? That is. <laughs> it might be. It might be. I don't know. But yeah, the. Uh, so, Hector, you know what a Juicy Lucy is? I have an idea, but I'm sure it's not a sandwich. Go ahead. <laughs> is it like a Cleveland steamer or something like that? Or the New Jersey meat hook? Is it anything like that? Or we talked about this last time you were on the show. The, yeah, the Alabama did. hot pocket. It's the, the juicy Lucy is a cheeseburger with the cheese on the inside. So they put a patty of, of ground beef and then they put the cheese on there. They put another ground beef patty on top. They sandwich it together. Then they grill it. And yeah, everything you're saying is is fantastic. Everything. Mm -hmm. Look, I want to go to Permanti Brothers, the real Permanti Brothers. Yeah. Not the one we have here. I want to go to Permanti Brothers. There's a lot of places I've heard about. I just, you know, look, I went to George when I was in Georgia, maybe 10 years ago. I went to the varsity. I like a good hamburger, too. I consider a hamburger and a hot dog part mm -hmm. of that whole sandwich. You know, anything stuck between bread. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, you know, a gyro. I mean, I'm down with that, you know. Yeah. You know, I want to go to Texas, have a good brisket sandwich or something. You know, I, I, I want to do those things. Yes. Life is short. Life I mean, is short. You know, what's left of it, life is short. So when we, obviously, when we're at the PCA trade show, we're going to talk to you about this. But um, uh, you mentioned before we went live, you guys have some cool, exciting projects in the works. And, and uh, we're excited to learn about those at PCA. Mm -hmm. But, you know, can you give us, uh, give us I a give you, I, there, as, as I, I like to tell the dean of radio, there are press releases coming. I'm just working on some other stuff right now. So I will, I will tell you about the one everybody knows about. Uh, we are bringing 601 into production. Uh, it's a little misleading. It says limited, but it's limited, you know, this year. We're making the 601 Black 2021 is a 6x50 Connecticut. It's a, it's a predicate date cigar from the EO days that Eric brought over when he, when, when he established Espinosa. Uh, it was that first kick him, in the, kick him in the teeth Connecticut, you know? Uh, while when Connecticut's were still, you know, your grandfather's cigar and golf course cigars and shit like that. Uh, it was a very, you know, it was a very full flavored, you know, good spice note, Connecticut. Uh, and it kind of, kind of trailed off as Eric said. And then, uh, you know, he went into another direction with the red and the green and the blue. But last year we wanted to, I wanted, I really pushed him to get it done because, uh, I have a strong belief that, uh, while other people are, are getting back in the cigar industry out of the blue after being gone for years because they think that the FDA has gone to sleep on us, I, I just think they're busy with other shit right now. But uh, I, I really believe that we need to get out as much stuff as we can in case deeming rules change and dates and, and all these things change, have as much have as much product out there as possible. And uh, I'm a big believer, and not to go down the rabbit hole of, of limited versus core line, I think limiteds are important in the sense that as a consumer, as a guy who sits in a cigar shop four or five times a week, I watch people walk into the shop and turn to my, 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 my buddy who owns the shop and go, what's new. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's just what's new. Well, you know, I've got this new Espinosa. Oh, really? Well, I haven't smoked Espinosa in a while. Let me try that. So it's uh, it's going to, it's a PCA exclusive in the sense that we're going to, we're going to make the first sales available at the PCA Obviously, we'll continue to sell it after the PCA and and uh, for the rest of the year, and then for for next year, I'll re we'll release another two, uh, another black, possibly another size. Uh, we also have, uh, and not to get too much in detail because I don't want to I don't want to jump the I don't want to jump the gun on the press releases, but we have the next installment of the the next iteration of the six provinces, which was uh, a little project that that Junior dreamt up of about three years ago. He had an idea. For a concept that would highlight every of every one of the original provinces of Cuba when they had six compared to now the 19 or so that they have. So we started with Habano, the LHB, which was a very strong, you know, stronger cigar. None of these are Cubanesque, and none of them have Cuban tobacco. They're not Cubanesque. They're they're tributes, you know, to what we know as the area and the people that we've met from those 
those distinct, those distinct areas. Last year we did, a, year before last, we did Matanza. The boxes have all been different. The first was a swing box that people really got into the swing box design. The second iteration was it looked like uh, like a it looked like the like the entranceway with you know with the shuttered doors and the little glass over the top, very delicate. Uh, and then this year we've got a new we've got a new design, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll wait to to. I'll wait to the press release to go much to go into that so you guys can actually see it. But uh, it's a, it's a very nice cigar. It's a grid size. It's five and a half, five and a, five and a half by fifty four, uh, and it's it's going to be something. You know, I'm I'm very proud of that blend. And then we have uh, again just a little tease. Uh, we've had an issue with Laranja probably since November because uh, of the pandemic. You know, acquiring the right wrapper that we wanted for Laranja. Uh, it had to be a particular Brazilian. It had to be it had to be Brazilian. It had to have a particular color to it because that's what we were looking for. And production kind of almost stopped. I mean, we we couldn't find it, but we luckily have found some more. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start production again in August, and we wanted to fill that void. So we have another Laranja project, also with you know that Brazilian influence in it. And you guys will see that. It's very, very excited about that. Nice. And and my favorite, which is our first limited, which was the Warhead the Warhead series that every year we come out with a different Warhead. Uh, it's a military tribute, you know, the flying tigers and the the paint that they used to put on the fighter bombers and the fighter planes and mm -hmm. uh, back in, in the World War II. So we're up to our seventh iteration of that. Uh, it's a seven by 50. Uh, what a really cool color scheme! Uh, they really outdid themselves this year. So we've got we've got a we've got a lot of new things coming, and for the and for the first time in years, we're coming to the show ready to bear. I mean, you know, yeah, a lot of guys are having problems with inventory, and 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 we're 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 nice and we're nice and chunky coming Good. into the show. So you know, we're it would it didn't make any sense to go to the show if you're not if you're not loaded for bear, you know. Yeah. So we're excited Absolutely. about those things. Well, uh, speaking of inventory and new stuff coming out over this whole pandemic situation, did you guys sit on anything uh, waiting for all of this to kind of start opening back up again before you are going to release any of this new stuff or, you know, kind of what, what has been the idea over the last year and a half, two years? No, we, uh, listen, the pandemic obviously caught everybody by surprise, you know, uh, even though people saw it coming for weeks, you know. Uh, we didn't, there's nothing that the only thing that we can say that we sat on and we had to sit on it for the fact that that the, 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 the six provinces does take some trips to, to Nicaragua to get the, to get the, uh, to get the box right to, you know, from, from sketch to prototype, you know, there's some things you just can't do on FaceTime or Skype or whatever. So that did take some trips going and we just couldn't, you know, we didn't, couldn't take the trips last year. And, uh, for those, if you haven't traveled going to Nicaragua, uh, you know, you have to take a test prior, you know, take a test prior to flying in and then you have to take a test leaving the country. So, I mean, you know, you have to really want to go for something for just one project, but, uh, we did, uh, Eric did junior did junior took the trip to, to, to put, you know, pencil after he put pencil, pe uh, pencil to paper with our artist, to take it and say, this is what we need. This is what I want. And uh, we could only finish it. We had to wait till this year to finish it. But everything else, we did it the same way we're doing it. I'm doing it with you. If we did a special release for somebody or uh, somebody needed this or, you know, protocol wanted to come out with a cigar or something. Uh, hey, how are you? Hey, look, I need this, 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 and this. All right. And this, it was on the phone or it was, you know, and then it took longer because now I'm asking for a certain, I'm asking for certain cigars blended a certain way. Now I have to wait for them to arrive. I have to smoke them and then I have to smoke them rather quickly in case I have to make any kind of adjustment so I can get a new batch sent to me before the next shipment, you know? Yeah. So it was a month to month process. Yeah. But we were, we, you know, to, to be honest with you, I think we, we were hitting up, we were batting about a thousand, uh, in during this pandemic, we've been very lucky. Also, what a great time to be a cigar smoker. I mean, you know, Everybody, you know, a, a guy who was smoking three cigars a week is smoking 10 cigars a week or 20 cigars a week. And everybody, you know, everybody was just making, you know, making, you know, whatever they could make and whatever, whatever they could get in the country and sell, it was gone, uh, which mm -hmm. led to, as I said earlier, 
the resurgence of uh sorry the resurgence of guys who you know that have been out of the industry for years coming back trying to make cigars and talking to guys in nicaragua who are telling me hey man these little cigar factories are popping up all over the place you know because uh, people see hey there's a boom time for me to get back in you know and yeah it's 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 taking its toll you know uh, it's taking its toll you know price increases uh the availability issues but i think this will all it, it, and like it all the, the cream will rise what is it the, the milk will separate the curd will separate from the whey eventually yeah and, mm -hmm. and those that are in it for the fast buck or the one last uh the one last uh, glory shot will be gone in a year or so and and we'll be back to normal hopefully yeah no i agree and there's been i think there's been like you said a lot of good movement in the in the business over the last year and a half or so and i think like you said we're we are seeing a lot of very small brands come up i think some of those small brands are doing really good work i think some of them uh have their work cut out for them and, and still have work to do but that's that's true in just about any kind of industry you have craft breweries and small distilleries some that are putting out great product and putting in the work and some that are putting out very mediocre product and will not last I have a lot of respect for anybody who's in the cigar industry. If they're going through the process, yeah. they're buying the tobacco, they're, they're, they're making good cigars. They're, they're going through the aging process. They're, they're making sure that they're separate, you know, they're separate sorting the ones, you know, the cigars that aren't, aren't worthy for, for sale off to the side. Uh, they're, they're spending money on boxes. You know, they're, they're getting good boxes done. They're getting good bands done, but this is the year that I've smoked possibly. I've, I've had some of the worst cigars that I've never heard of this year because since i go to the shop every, every almost every day uh he's constantly mm -hmm. getting thank you ma'am he's constantly getting uh he's constantly getting samples from many new new companies and i'm smoking i'm going man this is i smoked one that was still you could smell the ammonia when i opened when i took it out of the telephone i was like wow this is this is like a mr clean cigar this is ridiculous <laughs> yeah. you know it's not it's not it's not it's not even ammonia d it's just ammonia you know <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was awful so, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, listen, I'm not, not to bad mouth anybody because I, I can almost find an, a good quality to almost every cigar. Skip, used to, uh, Skip told me once that every cigar is good. Some are better. But this was the year that there were some that were just like awful. I mean, there were some that I lit and I, I put it down. Uh, and, and I'm not one of those guys who plays that bullshit that my cigar is the best and only my cigar is the, I don't believe in that shit. There are a lot of great cigars. A lot of, lot of fantastic, a lot of cigars in my rotation that are outside of my own. Yeah. But this year's a tough year. The tough it year is. for some of the stuff that, that made its way into shops or, or tried to make its way into shops that ended up on the sample table. And, you know, being, being that I'm in the cigar industry, Alan, Alan's always like, Hey, try this. What do you think of that? I go, Oh, this is, this is rough, man. Yeah. This rough, you know, it's got seven distinct flavors and the best one is shit, you know, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you, you know, but <laughs> that's where we, I'm, I'm telling you, that's where we were, you know, yeah. that's why I kind of miss the pre cigar pandemic era, man. Every time they handed you a cigar, Oh, I know that guy. That's a, He's going to make a good cigar. Yeah. I miss that a little bit and hopefully we'll get back to that. No, I think, I think we will. It'll uh, uh, like anything, the cycle takes time to play out and that arc will finally, you know, hit its peak and then, come down and you know the like you said the you know the 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 chaff will eventually just you know fade Separate. away yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so garrett is is it oh is it I, is it time i think so i think so i think it's time for this week's numero de los muertos <laughs> And the most morbid, the most morbid segment in any podcast in radio history. Go ahead. That's right. <laughs> and as always, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In.
Oh, oh shit. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Oh, oh, oh Garrett's, yes. got, Garrett's got a friend. Garrett's got a friend. Well, all right. What's your, what's your date's name, Garrett? This is Mortimer. <laughs> I think Mortimer's made a, a couple appearances on the show before. I think so. Yeah. He, uh, we, Morty's, ch- Morty's a good dog. He is. I tried to have him inside. Um, but before the show, he was just whining too much. So <laughs> he's been good just, just laying here. And I was worried about it because up here at the cabin, he hears a squirrel or sees a, a chipmunk and he is like, he goes back crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to kill that. <laughs> so, uh, numero de los muertos, Garrett, what do you have for us this week? This is a fun one. Well, well, fun. We'll see. Fun. What we'll I, see. Fun as re- as it relates to people dying. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen people in North America. It's a uh, uh, 2009 to 2019 average. The um, 99 to 2009 average was 27. And before that, it was higher yet. So it is trending downwards. Okay. So as always, viewers, put uh, some guesses in the comments. Let's play along with uh, Hector and myself as we try to decipher this puzzle. And on on cue, as always, (laughs) has his first guess, autoerotic asphyxiation. Is it is that what it is this time, Garrett? It's not. No, it's not that. No. Oh well. All right. Uh, I, I always wait for the the part where we get hints, so I'll wait. <laughs> so so the for the last ten years, the average has been seventeen people per year in the U, in North America have died yes. from this in the U.S. only. Yep. Oh, the U.S. only. Okay. Oh, in the U.S. only. Mm-hmm. Um, are they? workplace related accidents yes okay so they are workplace related accidents um skip says collapsing buildings wow it is not too soon bro too soon <laughs> too soon bro <laughs> too soon is it and, uh, the snack machine at work falling on you <laughs> We did do vending machines very yeah, early we did, on. It we was did one vending of machines. Um, um, and to clear it up, Chad, it is 17 a year is the 10-year average. So, Fuck, man. Uh, Chad says forklift crash. No, sir. It's got to no. be something like falling down an elevator shaft or something like that. Or falling, down- falling downstairs. No. No. Um, I forgot to look at my Morbid scale before I got on. Well, okay. So <laughs> I don't want us to get caught up on falling. Oh. But falling can be a cause of death in this occupation. <clears throat> Window uh, washer cleaners? Nope. Did that one too. You guys have covered all the dig- all the good deaths. Hold on, dude. I'm digging. <laughs> yeah, after 116 shows, it's tough for Garrett to find good material. Um, what about? So it's not it's not always falling, but is it? Does it have anything to do with with stuff falling on people? No, no. Uh, was this on dry land or water? On land. Land. Um, is there any kind of tool? Is it tool related or mechanically related? No. no. So it's not it's, nothing like in a car or forklift or anything like that. Correct. It is not roofers. Is it? it is, um, is it law it, enforcement related? No, more than not. seventeen. Much more than seventeen a year. Yeah. Um, On both sides. Uh, is the industry? White collar or blue collar? Good question. Blue. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking welding accident, uh, getting 
kill getting killed while you're cutting down trees or I did tree cutters. Fuck, um, man. <laughs> I know. Uh, it is not electrician. I'm guessing that's what Justin meant. Is it uh, Chad's, Chad's? It is Chad's exploding machine. toilets. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Um. Hey, Matt, you should call me later. We make, we make some changes to the show. <laughs> <laughs> This segment brought to you by We Bury You Lay Funeral Homes. We Bury You Lay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Making, putting them more and morbid every day. I don't <laughs> Um, is it, is it related to a specific construction trade? Mm -mm. No. Blue collar. It could be anything blue collar. How about a um, dog uh, getting mauled by a a canine handler or something getting mauled by his dog. Mm, that's a good one. No, but no. <laughs> that's are, a good one, but no. <laughs> are are vehicles involved? No. No. God, this is a tough one. Um, snake wrangling? No, that's not it. And you said tools are not involved. Correct. For the most part, I mean, every trade has every blue collar trade has a you know, tool. A tool, but and some I would that are not tools. consider this one. Um, it's not fast food. It's not air traffic controllers, though. That would be awesome. Yeah. Or not awesome. I mean, that not would be awesome. terrible. Um, I'm out, bro. I have no idea. Um, you haven't right. asked the, the, the question that typically really gets you on either on or off the track. Are they mostly men or women? Um, I don't know. If I was to assume in my chauvinism, <laughs> I would say it's mostly a male-dominated occupation. <laughs> Plumbers banging their wives. Uh, skateboard accident? That's, no, that's not. That's recreational. That's not a tradesman. Um, I, I don't know, man. Is you it guys really, aren't hitting the really buzzwords. Give, give I I need another hint. This one's buzzwords. Buzzwords. Oh, is it uh log cutters? A loggers? Is it beekeeping? Like, no. Some, no. All right. Well. All right. Think yes, of Chad. Butt. It is animal related. All right, but it's not bees. What else does? What else is a buzz thing? We're getting uh, there. We're real close. <laughs> Beavers? Beavers. <laughs> I just wanted to say beavers. That's really that's really okay. it. <laughs> so I will say bees are involved. Oh, okay. Bees are involved. Uh is it uh is it is it a honey? Is it an allergy? Mm -mm. Oh, so it's not a it's not an allergy to bee stings or to honey or it's not beekeepers you said right no so mm -hmm. it's not beekeepers are the guys who remove beehives from your house basically i'm gonna give it to both hector and chad it's not just bees it's uh it's exterminators and pest control pest control so Bar uh, pest control Hive removal and shit like that. There you go. Like yep. Chad said. Wow. Yep. So pest control. And here's the interesting part of it. While, you know, uh, stings, you know, can um, be part of it and getting uh, a super, super infected from a bite from, you know, a, a possum or a raccoon can lead to death. But the leading cause for many of these pest control people is actually dying of cancer from all of the chemicals that they've used over the years. And wow. since they've gotten better, that's why it's trending downwards. Well, well, that was, that was, that was uplifting. Something. Actually, I have, 
I have a story kind of related to this. So when I was a kid, probably I'm going to guess seven or eight years old, uh, we lived in the middle of nowhere in Indiana and we had out in the front yard one day, there were all these bugs swarming around like crazy. Like it was a cloud all in the front yard. And my brothers and I clueless as we were, were out there, you know, uh, playing around swinging baseball bats and spraying the garden hose at them. Uh, and then within a couple hours, all of a sudden there's this clump of them on a tree in the front yard, starting to build, uh, build a hive from one of the big hanging branches. So my dad gets, uh, he's got one of those, uh, uh, pump up sprayers. So he goes into town and picks up some kind of bug killer or something and puts it in this pump up sprayer and gets in the family station wagon. I shit you not. He gets in the family station wagon in the driver's seat and he drives into the front yard right up by this. Fortunately, it was low enough where he, he, so he gets some towels and stuffs the window opening and rolls the window up just like this far. So he can get the nozzle of the sprayer out there. And he's in the Vista cruiser spraying down, <laughs> spraying down the, uh, the hive, uh, the hive killing the all the bees. Now. And like an hour later, there was just a pile, the mountain of dead bees laying on the ground. And uh, yeah, that was, that could have been, that could have been a bad day for all of us, but absolutely, dad, dad came to the rescue in the, in the station wagon, uh, spraying down the beehive. That was pretty cool. Wow. Good times, Garrett. Good times. It is. Hey, Matt, it is uh, good times. So <laughs> Matt, I'm not doing the draft show next year. Don't tell me. <laughs> So that was this week's Numero de los Muertos. <laughs> that is some morbid shit there. I know. <laughs> so uh, let's get into this week's uh, let's get into this week's notable smokable brought to you by Ace Prime. Notable cigars, notable passion, notable purpose. Uh, so Hector, you've done this before. We talk about a cigar we smoked recently that was interesting to us. It could be brand new to the market. It could be something we smoked, uh, for the first time in many years that's been on the market forever. Just something that was interesting to us. So Hector, was there something you had recently that, that fits that bill? Actually, now that, uh, I had the new four kicks in the white box. If it, I think it's either, yeah, it's, I know for sure it's a crown yes. head. Yeah, the Kappa Especial. I really like that cigar. As a matter of fact, I, I I texted Miguel while I was having the cigar. It was very, very good. I really like that cigar. Yeah, so That's I the had... the newest cigar I've smoked. I had one. Uh, it, it was one of those experiences where, and, and we talk cigar smokers about this all the time, don't, don't ever give up on a cigar after the first try because I smoked one literally the day they showed up in the shop. So they were road weary, you know, and it was not a smart idea for me to smoke it right out of the gate, but I smoked it and it was, it, it really just wasn't all that I was hoping for it to be. And then I smoked another one about a week later and it, it was, they settled yeah, you, down after you, being in the shop for a couple of days. Yeah. You can't say it. it was the four kicks limited edition 2021. Yeah. 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 Nice cigar. Very nice cigar. Garrett, what was yours uh, this week? Well, before I get into what mine was, uh, Hector, can you help um, settle a, a debate? Do you take your wick off or do you no. smoke through it? I smoke through it. Yeah. Because unfortunately at the factory, they, from the beginning, we tried to explain to them that the wick was separate from the body of the cigar. But there were some instances that the wick was breaking off. Because this wick is substantially longer than the one from the first iteration of La Bomba when Eric was getting his cigars made yeah. with somebody else. So when we started to make it, the wick was a little longer, but they, you know, they kind of put it down with the with the with the gum. And there was instances that people would take it off and separate it and they may damage the wrapper. So when everybody anybody asked me, I always tell them the same thing. Just smoke through it. Yeah. Just yep. smoke through it. You're not gonna it's it it's you know. And actually, and and being a cigar guy like you guys are as well now, you know, we're, you know, we, 
we don't nub our cigars pretty much anymore. Once it gets to the wick, it's time for another cigar anyway. So, you know, once right. you're, if you're burning the wick, it's time to get another one, you know? Yeah, I always my, smoke through it. Yeah, I do too. Um, my notable this week was the Southern Draw Manzanita. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice I one. hadn't I hadn't had it yet, and uh, I had one yesterday. Gosh. So, you know, shout out to um, our uh, our buddies in Texas. Robert Holtz. Um, thank you. The Holtz. Who Robert, just, Robert and Sharon. Uh, Robert and Sharon are doing a fantastic job. Yeah, it's a good cigar. Um, mine actually was, again, related back to my trip this weekend. I've, I had never been to one of the big swanky uh, burn by Rocky Patel lounges before. And when we were in Naples, uh, we went to the, the burn lounge uh, in Naples. It's at this uh, nice big shopping center. And next, I next bought to, next, uh, next to blue martini. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I bought, bought one of the, uh, uh, the Rocky Patel LB one cigars which i had not had before it's and and uh it was nice it was a corona gorda size which is right in my wheelhouse uh nice cigar it's a connecticut shade but it's actually darker than a lot of connecticut shade wrappers that you see out there um so had a little bit more depth to it but yeah really really nice uh corona gorda cigar um so that was this week's notable smokables brought to you by ace prime improving lives through fine cigars visit aceprime.com to learn more uh so to give our viewers and listeners a little bit of an idea of some cool stuff we have coming up soon next week on july 5th garrett and i are going to have kind of a special uh patriotic show we're going to celebrate the fourth of july a day late uh we're going to smoke some patriotic themed cigars we're going to have some uh we're going to have some meat on the grill uh maybe some fireworks we'll see how things go and just uh just have a good time just just hanging out, chilling, talking about cigars. And then following that, uh, live from the PCA trade show, we're going to be going live multiple times a day on July 9th through July 13th, live from Las Vegas, uh, and have a good time covering that trade show. Uh, we have some great stuff coming up in the weeks following that as well. Uh, and we'll, of course, see Hector and all the crew from Espinosa Premium Cigars there at the trade show. Uh, Hector, give our viewers and listeners the final, where's the best place for them to keep up on all the great stuff going on with uh, Espinosa? Well, <laughs> I would tell them, obviously, uh, social media. Keep, uh, you know, uh, the Lazona page on Facebook as well as the Espinosa page on Facebook, uh, you know, for all of the current what's going on with the, uh, with the Zolites. Obviously, EspinosaCigars.com, uh, the traditional website. We don't tweet. Uh, we don't tweet. We Instagram a little bit, and we definitely Facebook. But uh, we're looking. Uh, you know, you could always find one of us on a podcast somewhere. Uh, you know, talking about Espinosa and uh, preaching preaching the karma of our dogma to, <laughs> <laughs> to you. But uh, yeah, well, that's that's where we are. You know, uh, my Facebook page, Eric's Facebook page, Juniors, Richies, or Jacks. Uh, we're always on there posting a cigar, where we're at, where we've been, where we're going. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's how we keep in touch. Yeah. Well, and in case brother, anybody just, didn't, well, yeah, go ahead. Just, I, I was just going to say, in case anybody hadn't seen the first show we did with Hector, if you just search YouTube for um, Hector, how about that cigar? You'll be able to see our first interview with him, and that gives a little bit more history and background as to how he became. Um, the legendary <laughs> guy at Espinosa Cigar, and uh, so I, I encourage everybody to go. Wow! Yeah, you, you're back. You're you'll be on the draft show, Garrett. You'll be <laughs> nice work, sir. Nice work. You. I felt a breeze up my skirt. Nice work. <laughs> Good. That's what I was going for. Good man. Suck up. Hey, twenty dollars <laughs> is twenty dollars, baby. 20, that's right. <laughs> twenty bucks is twenty bucks. <laughs> Well, Hector, brother, thank you so much for being on episode 116, man. We we always love hanging out and talking to you, and, and I we'll appreciate look it. Look forward to seeing you live in in Las Vegas. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. I'll be sending you my email critique of the show, especially the depth the depth part. 
I think we can probably nix that with, uh, you know, <laughs> we probably nix that and go somewhere another direction. You know, <laughs> I, that's the second time or the third time I've been on that. I, I, I am lost for how people die. I mean, <laughs> just, you know, if it's not, if you didn't get shot by police or some shit like that, I'm out. I'm out. I, don't, I can't help you there. Well, but actually, no, Hold up. I just I totally forgot the lightning round because we've done the lightning round questions with you before, but I came up with some new ones. Hit me. We got to do hey, it. It's only, right. we're, we're only getting on two hours. That's yeah, no big deal. Come on. Yeah. This is nothing. We're, we're at 90 minutes right now. So so Hector, what is your favorite commercial jingle from the past? From the past? It's got to be Slinky. Yeah. Oh. That's a great jingle. Everyone knows it's Slinky. It's Slinky. Yeah, come on, man. Slinky, it. baby. It's Sticky. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, stole it. I'm showing Sticky my age. Brain. Showing my age, but Slinky. I love that. Garrett, do you have one? You know, that's a really good one because uh, then Ren and Stimpy stole it. And yeah. uh, they had a little rendition of log but log, log. you know <coughs> the first thing that popped into my head when you asked that question was elka seltzer oh um, yeah plop plop i just remember it. what a wonderful oh plop, what plop, a relief plop, it is. oh what a wonderful relief it is yeah commercials commercials have gotten so much better now yeah i mean that commercial where the guy is telling you how not to be with your parents how not to be <laughs> like oh, your parents <laughs> If that guy was hiring, I would apply to work for that guy. Yes. All right. Now, try not to sit down like your dad. We all see it. it. It's, we all see it. see it. You know, and now I'm going to show no. you how to open up a PDF. I mean, that guy, <laughs> nobody nobody cares. Nobody cares. Right. He didn't I, ask, I, he didn't I ask love for that. your help. He didn't ask I, for your help. I love that guy. <laughs> I love that guy. I wish I could work for that guy. Well, here's that guy had an opening. Google. I'm all over it. The Clapper. That's a good one. Folgers, that's good. Although Folgers coffee sucks, but their jingle's good. Yeah. One one that I thought of was actually for a fictional product. It wasn't even a real product, but you guys remember the show WKRP in Cincinnati? Sure. They had yeah. the jingle for Red Wigglers, the Cadillac of Worms. <laughs> that I don't know. I know it's I a fake it's, it's a fake product, but I it, mean, I, I remember I remember WKRP and you know Herb Tarlick just died last week. Yeah, the guy who played Herb Tarlick just died. Yeah, and uh, to me, it's always going to be Johnny Fever and Les Nessman with the turkeys. Oh, the yeah. and mommy, you know, with the turkeys falling from the helicopter. I mean, <laughs> that year. And you know how he would tape off if you didn't go if you, he'd tape off what his office was supposed to be. Yeah, that's too that's too much. Now you're asking you're you're, you're that's too much of a deep dive. I can't remember that. So, <laughs> Hector, what was your first car, and did you name it? No, I did not name it. My first car was a 1973 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Ooh. White with brown interior with a 350 rocket engine in it. Nice. Uh, it was a it was a it was a quick little car. It was a well, not little. It was a quick car. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, my first car. It was my very first car. Nice. Garrett, I know what yours is, but tell the tell everybody what yours was. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of two. So I took my road test in a 1972 Chevy K um, K10 three on a tree, and the next day it died. So then I got a 1989 Merker Scorpio. Yeah, the Merker Scorpio. That's not the XR4Ti, right? I think it no. was the same car, wasn't it? Basically, it was yeah. just uh, so the it was the the UK version of the Ford Taurus, and the XT XT XKTR was the SHO of the UK. I love that XR4 Ti. What an ugly car, but I loved it. It was so ugly, ugly, but it it was I think it was a Cosworth engine. It used to have uh, had like a Cosworth yes. engine. It was very very yeah. fast, but very yeah. ugly. It looked like yeah. a turtle. It was kind of like a turtle with the very thin tires, very skinny tires, yeah. big car on it. Very yeah. fast. Yeah, mine was a 1978 Mercury Grand Marquis Brougham. Did you have like a did you have like a small boat drift you off into the <laughs> into the channel or Such like a, a big, tugboat take you out into the Well, and so and although <laughs> I I didn't really name cars, 
but um, my dad nicknamed the car the Titanic. Get it? Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 dad with the jokes. Yeah, <laughs> dad jokes. Very good. But uh, it was fitting considering that car had a wheelbase of six point two nautical miles i mean that car was huge it was big four-door you know had a 460 interceptor under the hood it was it was beautiful it weighed eight thousand pounds it did yeah it got six miles to the gallon on a good day downhill with a tailwind um so hector if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone which three would you keep well for sure you porn and uh, <laughs> wrong crowd, wrong crowd. I'm sorry. Uh, what are the other two? <laughs> uh, red tube. No, <laughs> actually, if I had to keep, I, and this is very simple because I can just look over here at my usage. All right. It's for me, it's very simple. I have, and, and, you don't consider the ones that come with the phone as apps. So, you know, like their SMS and, and shit like that, that doesn't count. Right. Or email. But my three, my three most used apps are MLB. All right. Uh, Toy Blast, which I just can't stop playing Toy Blast. I love it. And ESPN fantasy foot, the, the fantasy app for ESPN. Those are my three most used apps. Uh, you porn, there's no app. You just go to, you got to go through (laughs) Firefox. You gotta gotta hide it up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Garrett, what about you? That's a tough one. I would probably have to go with um, Follow Chess, which shows all of the uh, FIDE chess tournaments that are going on globally. I follow chess pretty closely, so um that explains the and, death thing. i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> and the the faces of death app too right faces of death uh, yes. app uh, yeah <laughs> yeah um and then i mean if we're not counting email yeah it can't be like native apps yeah yeah i would have to say um i mean facebook and ap news yeah yeah, I thought about this one, and I just don't. Because here's the thing. I do mobile device management for work all day long. So dealing with mobile devices is like it's my day job, and I don't want to deal with it after hours. Um, so really it would be Facebook just because of, because of how about that cigar. And it right. would be... Um, <sighs> Yeah, I really, that's the only one I can think of just because I have to keep up with the, you know, the podcast and all that stuff. Well, Podbean, because I listen to, uh, I'll say Podbean and Spotify. So Facebook and Podbean and Spotify, because I listen to podcasts all the time. I don't listen to, I do still listen to a lot of music, but I think I listen to more podcasts than I do music anymore because I'm getting old. Yeah, I would probably switch out chess for my Audible. That's where I listen to uh, listen to a lot of audiobooks yeah. and also my podcasts. Yeah. I'm still sticking with you porn. <laughs> hey. I'm not trying to impress anybody who's watching going, ooh, he watches chess. No, that guy <laughs> likes porn. <laughs> hey, you do you, bro. Hey, you be yeah, you, baby. They probably have stuff on there about chess. It just might be different than the kind different of different kind of chess. Sure. Watches. It's you got to be careful when you're when you're searching for black crocs on that search bar. <laughs> <laughs> you never, you know, you don't know what you're gonna get. You're not gonna get shoes at Amazon. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, this is why <sighs> this is why we do what we do. So yes. we can so we can have these kind of conversations on how about that cigar. This is this is what the world wants to talk about on cigar yeah. podcasts. Yes. And Victor, that's why we have you on the show. 
I appreciate it. I'd like to bring a little, you know, I, it's hard to come back from that deaf segment. You know, I'm doing the best That's I right. can here. That's I'm right. I'm doing the best I can here. <laughs> well, this was this has been a great show. We uh, we thank you so much, Hector, for being on and spending some time with us tonight. We had a great time, as always. And, and again, we cannot wait to uh, to hang out and spend some time with you in Las Vegas, even though it is Las Vegas and there's going to be like 10,000 other people there. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiastic, right? Uh, looking forward to that. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah it's going to be good. It'll be good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's going to be great. It's like 118 degrees in Vegas this week, by the way. It's going to be like, you know, I'm waiting for that one guy who just burst into flames as he's walking through the strip. <laughs> Catch. Yeah. Just well, the nights, you know. Because we're staying across the street at Treasure Island, so we get to walk across the Skyway every morning. Out, out out into that. What is going on with the audio all of a sudden? Death is coming. Death <laughs> <laughs> oh, Garrett's earbuds just died. See, there, uh, there you go. It's all about timing. Now, Garrett, you can't do the you can't do the the end of the catchphrase. Dog on it. I can't hear you. No sign language. Do the sign language thing. <laughs> get, get President Obama's Obama. sign. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it's echoing, echoing like crazy, crazy though. though. Of course it is. Hold, Hold on. on. It's that three season porch. Okay. How about, How about now? now? How about now? Well, well I, think I think it's echoing. Like this, this has a lot, a lot of the heckle and heckling. jekyll production values. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I like I, this. I turned, on, I turned on echo cancellation for you. We're good now. So, uh, as always, for our viewers and listeners, thank you guys so much for spending time with us on How About That Cigar, for watching live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and for those of you listening after the fact on the audio podcast, thanks so much for listening while you drive down the road or work out whatever it is you do while you listen to your favorite audio podcast. Thanks for making How About That Cigar one of those podcasts. As always, you can uh, follow us on social media at HBT Cigar. Uh, if you guys have questions for Garrett or myself, email us directly on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. And as always, until we see you guys next time, burn cigars, not bridges. See you guys. Thanks very much. Later, guys. Thank you. <laughs>